Well, that game took six years off my life. Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to an episode of Packers, the podcast where you don't do a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom Grassi, and oh my goodness, what a game. What a freaking fracking game as the Green Bay Packers defeated the Carolina Panthers 24-16 to in a game that came down literally to the final five seconds and a stuffing of Christian McCaffrey. Yep, because the defense just wanted me to crap my pants. Mission accomplished. But before we break down the game, I want to do a big shout out to our brand new Patreons over at patreon.com slash Tom Grassi Comedy. Joining the Matt Flynn for the win tier and joining the credits is Rye and Fish. A thank you to you. And joining the Tom freaking fracking Grassi tier is Max. Thank you to both of you and check out patreon.com slash Tom Grassi Comedy for some cool rewards if you'd like to support me. Now, uh, doing a brief overview before we get into the stats. Wow. This game, man, this game had just about everything and was an incredibly exciting game throughout the uh, throughout all four quarters, really, uh, in which the, the, the teams just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It started snowing. You got the ambiance of Lambeau in November and winter, and it was just beautiful. And the defense crapped the bed a whole bunch of times. Now, now... Now, there were, some, there were some players that stood out. Kevin King blew some plays, but then did well on some others. And Blake Martinez, you know, missed some tackles again and blew some coverages. But And Jair dropped a couple interceptions as well. But for the most part, considering we were able to hold the Panthers to 16 points and more impressively, hold Christian McCaffrey to under 150 all-purpose yards and only 108 yards on the ground, I'd take that as a win. But... Yeah, there are some still obvious gaps that we need to address uh, in our defense and that the zone coverages that we're playing on some of these guys is just not working out. Guys like DJ Moore having a big game, Samuel coming up with some big catches, and Greg Olson because he's a tight end and we can't cover tight ends at all, also having a big game. But taking a look at the stats, Rodgers uh, 17 for 29, only had to throw 29 times, 233 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Uh, Aaron Jones, again, after having a... Uh, an off game because we had no game plan last week. Uh, the game plan this week was utilize Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, and that they did. Jones pulling off a hat trick, going 13 for 93 on the ground for three touchdowns. Good God, man. This guy, I know we've been talking about Christian McCaffrey being the most valuable player, and I still think he has the bit of the edge because, in my opinion, when you're talking about literally most valuable player, for the Panthers, he is that guy. But Aaron Jones has just been a Swiss army knife of efficiency this year. Whether it's through the air, whether it's on the ground, the guy has just almost always showed up in every single game. Uh, Jamal Williams, 13 for 63 on the ground, so they split carries and they were both very, very effective. Uh, Devontae Adams coming back in his second game was targeted the most by far out of all the receivers with 10 targets. Hauled in seven receptions for 118 yards. Graham had himself a good day too. Only two catches but for 59 yards and those were big, big catches. Uh, Lazard also three for 27. Uh, Kumro even two for 23 on that. Uh, now, you also had Tremont Williams getting a pick in the end zone after a tip off of Adrian Amos. He also had some fumbles going on, recovered by the Packers. Preston Smith had two sacks on the day. Lancaster had one sack, so a total of three sacks. Kyle Allen, for the most part, had a pretty comfortable pocket, though. We, do, we did pressure him a few times, but only getting to the quarterback three times. Uh, so, you know, that could go either way. And, and also explains the stats of why their receivers and tight ends were able to do so well. So our pass rush really wasn't efficient last week against the Chargers and was was better this week, but could have definitely uh, improved in some areas. Now looking over at the Panthers, uh, Kyle Allen, 28 for 43 on the day, 307 yards, one TD and one interception. That 307 yards, a career high for him. Also had a fumble. Caffrey, 20, on the, 20 rushes on the ground for 108 yards and one touchdown and a big stuff at the very end of the game. DJ Moore, 9 for 120, and then Olsen, 8 for 98, and the Panthers had two sacks as well. Now, taking a look at... Uh, some other aspects of this game. The refing is also going to be talked about. Uh, for the Packers, they had a really bad rough in the passer call in which we booped Kyle, Kyle Allen on the head, almost like the Rashawn Gary one from a few weeks ago. And 
a terrible offensive pass interference call on Alan Lazard. And then right in turn, there is a BS roughing the passer call on Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, uh, in the end zone, which continued that drive and led to points as well. And so I know Carolina Panthers fans are going to BS up, or they're going to complain about the uh, the refs, and, and I, I don't blame them. Again, the refs were, weren't good for uh, either team, to be completely honest. Um, but if, if you take a look at this, I'm, I'm proud of what our team was able to accomplish. Obviously, an embarrassing loss last week against the Chargers. This was definitely a, a making a statement and making a comeback kind of win. Now, there are some gutsy calls that were, uh, or potential questioning calls uh, that were implemented like right before halftime, uh, there was a couple seconds left on the clock and we were on the one yard line and we decided to go for it instead of settling for the field goal. We, after literally <laughs> what took like an hour and a half or what it seemed like to come up with a play call after calling timeouts and the Carolina Panthers calling timeouts, we decided just to run it inside with Jamal Williams and he got stuffed immediately. Not really a, uh, a lot of ingenuity on that play call, but uh, it didn't come back to bite us, thankfully. Uh, as we were able to win by eight points. And then the Panthers, uh, when potentially being able to uh, be down just by seven, decided to go for it on, and get a two-point conversion, and they failed. Uh, so even if Christian McCaffrey scored at the very end, they still would have had to get a two-point conversion. So I don't know why Rivera put them in that position, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. But right now, looking around the league, uh, obviously we are eight and two. The Saints lost today, so they are 7-2, meaning that the Packers are now the number two seed currently heading into the bye next week, uh, and then we are taking on the San Francisco 49ers, which will be an absolutely crucial game when it comes to playoff implications uh, and if we're able to get a first round bye. But overall, obviously, I'm, I'm really happy with the team win. We showed a lot of balance. Devontae Adams getting more involved. It seemed at some points, though, the offense uh, definitely did sputter a bit. Um, Rodgers, for the most part, had a pretty clean pocket every now and then. Uh, and the defense, again, like we just really need to clean up some of that defensive work. Pettin has to, uh, to scheme better. But again, you know, while some people will be like, oh, well, McCaffrey, you know, the, their running back scored 100 yards. Yeah, that's okay. Considering how good McCaffrey is, I'll, I'll take 108 yards on the ground. Um, and the defense came up big when they really had to. And they, they blocked two-point conversions. And then, obviously, the, the last series in which they were able to stop Christian McCaffrey just short of the goal, short of the goal line and able to take off the win. So uh, I, I think that this was a, a very positive win for the Packers. They needed this. Now we get to go into a bye, rest up, heal up, and uh, have two weeks to game plan for the 49ers, which we will most certainly need as they take on the Seattle Seahawks tomorrow night. Um, but... Other than that, a good team win, a terrifying win, and if that went into overtime, I don't think my body would have been physically and mentally able to handle that. But we're 8-2 right now. Obviously, the Vikings won this evening, so they're just still one game away from us. Uh, I would have loved there to be some uh, buffer in between us, a little two-game buffer, but God forbid the Cowboys ever help us out. And so, uh, yeah, it's still going to be a race to the finish. The Vikings... They have a couple tough games coming up, but uh, you know, other than that, it might come down to week 16 on what decides the division, or at least when it comes to playoffs. So the Packers from here on out, I mean, we are in control of our own destiny, but running the table from this point and winning out most certainly would, uh, would alleviate a lot of the stress that I have. This is not a perfect football team right now, but you know, I think it's a football team that is built to, to go make a deep run. Uh, in the playoffs, especially as it gets colder and colder. If we can lock down some home games, uh, I think that'll be very beneficial for us because it's not easy to come into Lambeau and play, you know, when, when it's less than 30 degrees, as the Carolina Panthers found out today. Um, but we'll uh, hopefully get right over the bye week and uh, we have a big game coming up. This is a big win for playoff implications and a big win for the team that really, really needed to rebound after a disgusting loss last week. So... We still got a, a lot of season left, so let's see what happens uh, after the bye. But let me know what you thought about the game down in the comments below. What do you feel about our receivers still? Are you happy with how our running backs played? What about our defense? Let me know. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy on all social media you see down below. Check out PatCast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And check out Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy for some cool rewards if you would like to support me. Thank you very, very much. We'll have some more content coming out on Monday. We'll get some rankings and things like that on Tuesday. But uh, yeah, 
we're going to have some fun during this bye week. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go!